no ban, no respect on the Yoni of Joshi just yet. Maybe they want to let it be open this time around and maybe have something like a Kha'Zix here for 0 7 11 to counter it out. But again, you always need to be very, very careful in how Nygma Galaxy operates. This really aggressive team just lands the decisive blows. So we see the coaching staff as well, Vansu just looking at the camera and just, yep, just having a good time here on the stage. And just the support as well on the live stream by our Filipino fans here, Nygma Galaxy fans, just having the best of time, especially after that first win by NGX. Yeah, now with uh, seeing that game number one, Jace has been removed. They don't want to give it to just Chi, and they don't want a flexible pick to the sides of NGX. Alistar will be open, however, for draw to be able to use for this game. Alistar is going to be the way to go this time around by Enigma Galaxy. It's just so pure. Again, this is the advantage that you get from picking up the Alistar in, in exchange for uh, when compared to a Gragas, right? Even though the Gragas is banned, I just want to talk about this. The Unbreakable Will it just allows you to su sustain so much damage, especially that J Team really loves investing on high damage champions like a Ziggs. This survivability allows Enigma Galaxy to just retake and regain control in a team fight, reposition themselves and add again attack from a different angle. And J Team responding again with their standard picks. I love the synergy between the, the Ziggs and the Garen. That way, after the Mega Inferno Bomb gets casted here by Pan, there can be a follow up by Dawn 128 to land that sword and kill at least one member of NGX. Yeah, basically, it's one huge damage damage deer, a glass cannon, and one really, really tanky frontliners being locked in already immediately for the first phase picks by JT. But NGX answered once again with Varus, with a performance of Demon Kite. I mean, this is no strange thing to be picked up by NGX. Mm -hmm. Renekton as well by High, it's just perfect. Very characteristics of them. We now see, you know, the uh, the the positive vibes from the players of Nygma Galaxy on the camera as well. J-Team gonna be bringing out the big guns once more. We see the Olaf of 0711 that landed the MVP a while ago. Yeah, and they, don't, they do not want 0711 to be stunned, to be CC chained um, and can't go for the contest at the objectives. And Olaf is just a perfect fit, especially considering you have the Alistar, you have Varus, you have Renekton in the hands of NGX, they have to pick it up. Now, J-Team bans away the Kha'Zix, followed up by Rakan for the side of NGX. Will they ban the Yone? I think that is a necessary ban that J-Team has to take here just to give a couple of respect more towards Nygma Galaxy, but that will open up more pokes again. Since the Jace has to be taken away, that is already a good sign, but they can still go for something like a Kai'Sa here into the mid lane for NGX. Unless J Team picks it up though. They have a chance to do so. Maybe they can steal it out away from Aaron and be the one to have that poke action with a Kai'Sa, especially at full AP and also with at least three items to get all upgrades on her kit. Yeah, there's still a lot of options for NGX to pick up. Lee Sin is still open. You still have the likes of Riven as well. Lucian could be picked up for Aaron, who wants to go for that mid lane. So if they want to go aggressive, there's still a lot of options. And as we have stated, Lee Sin for Justy is open for early aggression. Man, you're on point on those predictions. The, the, the Lee Sin and the Lucian both picked up here by Enigma Galaxy. Just, just shows so much flavor on their side. But J Team bringing the big guns once more. The Thrash looking to chain up the members of Enigma Galaxy this time around. And now this is a bit of a shocker. J Team went in for the Thrash instead. A lot of safety net coming in for the squishy targets or squishy members of the team. You have. Pan, you have Barry on a Ziggs and Kaisa, and expectedly Kaisa is going on AP, uh, AP item build. So if ever it comes down into a worse situation, Thresh is ready to pull them back with a lantern. I am loving this right now. We have only seen the Thresh be picked up by two teams. One is Rare Atom and one is J Team. The first, the last time we have seen J Team pick up the Thresh is, well, a, a long, long time ago, to be honest. 
and it was during the regular season. I, I, I believe it was during the regular season as well when they battled against JDG. Day number 47, the last day of the regular season. And now it's going to be used once more. Everything is just being taken into consideration here by J-Team. So astounding in the research. It's impressive. It's impressive to say the least coming in from both sides. Bringing out this trademark picks and this surprise picks. Trash for DY. A lot of expectations on the line and early aggression for the side of J team could be done with a death sentence from Trash. Mm hmm. It's one hook, right? Especially on the squishy targets here of Nigba Galaxy, which is a lot. The Lacian, even the Renekton, is relatively squishy if you don't allow him to use that Dominus. Lucian and Varus, of course. It's only draw on the Alistar that can actually survive being hooked even a lot of times. And that really makes Nigma Galaxy supposedly be more careful. But right now, they're set their flavor still. An invade by Jushi. And a good steal. Jushi still gets the uh, red buff. So a good thing for the side of NGX as you have an early level 2 coming in from Jushi. But on the other side, a little bit more on the back foot for this game number 2. But still, you have 0711 going in for the vertical counter invasion into mm -hmm. NGX's red buff. Just you might need to help out draw and Demon Kite though, because we have just had a small glimpse in the bottom side, and DY and Betty's just doing a lot of damage here into the tier one tower of Nigma Galaxy. 600 health compared to the 1400. Just a massive lead that J Team is having in the bottom lane. They will get this first tower for sure. Yeah, and the thing is, we all know that the tower on top lane or in mid lane is much more tankier than the ones in the bottom lane. So it's much more harder for respond. NGX to take it down. DY Ignite takes him down. First blood secured by NGX, but 0711 wants to answer back and they get a kill of their own. One for one trade. But they do get the first... Are they going to get the first Whoa. tower? It looks like they, they do. are. Yeah. They in do, just a do. nick of time. Just a split second difference. And that's all because of the play that Galaxy had here in the bottom lane, forcing J-Team to go back, commit onto them. Yes, they lost Aaron in the process, but they got the first tower and also just stalled out this game. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of tradebacks. It's a lot of macro being set in play in this game. And I think Aaron and Hydes' role into the bottom lane was just all about delay. They got a kill for Aaron, and you know what, 0711 got a trade back, but in the end, the Tower First Blood was what they wanted in the end. Mm -hmm. So it's double bonus here for Neuma Galaxy in retrospect. We see Barry still being the one having the most gold secured, especially because of the plates uh, that yeah. that he was able to get, uh, get a couple of times here, especially in the bottom lane. But Demon Kite is not trailing that far behind. Only 200 gold difference. And Joshi as well is leading second here on the side of Nygma Galaxy. This way, maybe Nygma Galaxy can step on the gas pedal a little more, try to gank um, the Kai'Sa in the bottom side. Maybe try to, to gank Dawn 128 as well in the top side since later on, Hyde is going to be able to deal some damage. Whichever item he does get, whether it's Blade of the Ruin King or the Black Cleaver. Yeah, and like how you mentioned about the uh, potential ganks that Justy can do in this early game, considering that every single one is already at level 5. And Lee Sin, when it comes to level 5, in, in regards to the aggression of this specific champion that he is using, it is a lot to take in if you go for the ganks. Justy is more than capable of doing so. Mm-hmm. This guy just makes really good, miraculous plays uh, against anyone that he comes across with. A while ago with his Jace, he, he landed an MVP during their last match against J-Team as well. He got the MVP with his Yone. And in this case, he wants to channel every single bit of that energy into the second game as well so that he can get those decisive kicks, decisive plays to take down J-Team. Because right now, it's going to be a lot more difficult. There's like three front lines that can stop just the the silence is there, but a kick. Ooh. Oh, never mind. Perfect satchel, satchel charge. Time. Yeah, it's it's wonderful. It's flawless coming from Pan. If that satchel charge was any second longer, it could have been the death of him. Mm-hmm. Because 
the follow up would have been there as well coming from Demon Kite. He was actually on his way towards the mid lane. Right now things are on a lull state. J Team and Enigma Galaxy are shaking their hands to each, towards each other for the meantime, waiting for the first objective to spawn up, which is the dragon. Aaron. Not in dragon gonna be Aaron. key though. Aaron! Oh Flash. so close! Oh so close. Within inches of death there coming in from Aaron, but so far so good. A little bit of mobility might just have saved his life. Mm-hmm. Was a Timo away from getting caught there on the hook and sentence would have been delivered for him. Death would have been served towards this Lucian, but it's not gonna be the case. Enigma Galaxy again prioritizing on the RH. But the good thing here on J Team's side is that they're starting the dragon this time around. Yeah, it's it's needed. Because NGX's winning condition is the early game. They brought out the Lee Sin, they brought out the Lucian. If they go for late, they're batting up against Olaf, the Ziggs, the Kaisa, the Garen. All of these things are not going to be in their favor later on. Mm -hmm. They need to accelerate this game as much as possible. There's Dawn. If she can escape, it's going to be fine. But they always need to watch out for those death sentences from DY. They're unsuccessful as well in taking this first tower in the mid lane. In which J Team is going to be happy with that. They have the Ziggs. They can prevent the wave from reaching towards the towers. And that just signals more benefit of them getting the first dragon. Yeah, and I like how Aaron is playing really safe at the moment. Like, he knows and he understands that he doesn't have any vision on the tri brush and doesn't have any information on the bot side river. So, if ever a gank occurs, he has to act quick and he has to be safe. That is why he just hugs the tower in the bottom lane. And so far, pretty standard across the board for every single one especially that he doesn't have the flash uh, after using it a while ago right? he just needs to keep his distance top side gonna be pushed here by 0 7 11 and on 1 to 8 but the rest is here this is a five-man roam coming from j team really dangerous position but just g in a good spot as dy is isolated lost in the woods and that will be ngx taking another kill for themselves defending the tower in the top lane ski two here for enigma galaxy that is an avenue in which they can inject some gold towards their carries. Aaron has been busy in the bottom lane, securing some plates as well. Just perfect here for Enigma Galaxy. J Team has to really watch their six, watch their side lane. Because every time they leave a lane open, Enigma Galaxy is just getting something out of there. Right, once again, looking at a bottom lane, not a fight. It will occur for both sides. Everyone's playing a bit more passively this time around, considering. The J team has lost a member on top lane just a while back. And another thing is, Infernal Drake is gonna come up really, really soon. So everyone has to play for objectives and has to think about how they can get the lead onto the Infernal Drake, how they can get the prio onto the objective. Demon Guide has been stacking up as well. Aaron, too. That gold funneling of Nigma Galaxy is just gonna be so important later on in the next fight, in which you have stated Infernal Dragon up and ready in the next 30 seconds. J Team has to establish vision quickly and swiftly because that's how they can catch Nigma Galaxy off guard. They have the hook, right? They need to set dominance. They need to go deep in order to threaten the members here of Nigma Galaxy because it's only draw that can actually catch those hooks. If ever it's a different member, then that's going to be a big win for J Team. But getting the power in the top lane is also good. Yeah, job's done. I think the only role for Olaf and Crush at that point was to zone away the enemy team. And that they did for the, the rest of the team to just push on top to gain a lot of gold in their favor. However, so far, Aaron is just solo farming in the bottom lane, left alone. And that just gave them, what, a lot of plates, a lot of gold, a turret as well. That brought them to a 3k gold lead in 8 minutes. Enigma Galaxy as well getting the first tower into the mid lane after seeing J-Team rotate towards the top side and getting that tower there. It's just perfect here again. A demonstration, a masterclass in terms of macro here by Enigma Galaxy. Second item completed by most of the members here of NGX as well. A Rift Maker completed already by Demon Kite shows that they this is gonna be an AP Varus focusing on the procs of the of those passive marks in order to get that maximum 80 percent uh, percent hp damage on the tanky members of j team uh, we've seen it before and uh, demon kyle is using it really really well and just a while ago in game number one 
I believe he used the same build and that damage was insane coming in from this player. Demon Kite knows more about the bottom lane than anyone, any one of us could. And uh, it's just insane being on the hands of Demon Kite for this various Infernal Rick, however, is now up. And there's a possible steal here by Joshi again. This is a Lee Sin. High probability of getting the last damage into this Infernal Dragon. But 0711 still relatively healthy. The post coming through here from Pan. And the rest of the squad as well. Just pressuring down the members of Dengama Galaxy away from this objective. But good vision established. That means that NGX can be patient. Yeah, and J Team, their macro play once again. Their macro knowledge being highlighted just from that. But NGX was focused on playing tag on the Infernal Drake. Well, the, what, three members coming in from J-Team oh. focused on a mid lane turret and now Hyde goes to engage onto 0711 in danger. Really, really low Hyde as well. Has to retreat, but a Mega Inferno Bomb secures the final blow and NGX loses a member. 0711 managed to stay alive as well. She's perfect for J-Team to have the numbers advantage. Hulk onto just G. That sentence, it definitely would be. Dragon's Rage, not enough. Sonic Rage, goes in. through. And he goes in just to get a bit more damage through. Up against J-Team, but he loses his life. It is a 3v4. No junglers left coming in from NGX. But the another damage. man up, up coming in from Draw is enough to take one man down. But it's not enough to take the rest. Aaron on the back side will not pursue for more as Bat is here and the rest oh. of the crew Airy secures the final hit from Pan and that is the that is just That's amazing the, the coming end. in from Pan uh-huh J team getting the upper hand getting more members than Nigma Galaxy started with this very moment Hyde getting caught out, 0711 staying alive, and damage is coming through from the Debatian Justice and the Mega Inferno Bomb. Minus one on the NGX side, and then they did not hesitate anymore because they know they have the upper hand. 0711 is still relatively healthy, in which NGX, they got a little bit desperate, they started the dragon, and then Joshi got caught. That initiation by J Team actually allowed them to get the better damage output against Nigma Galaxy. No jungler means that the dragon is gonna be threatened by 0711. That way, NGX tried to be desperate. They went on in a really good engage by draw, but still, having the dragon secured by J-Team increased their damage, increased their survivability. The exhaust onto the Varus as well by Demon Kite allowed them to survive with one HP left. And Aaron getting caught, unfortunately, at the very end, it's just a cherry on top. Yeah, he was about to survive, but the Aerie along with the Leandri from Ziggs was just enough to take him down and now NGX a while ago had a huge lead now it's gone only 1k left for them to utilize oh man this game is so close look at the gold 500 but given the dragon stacks of J team it's slowly coming to that inevitable end because they have Infernal Dragon, they have Mountain Dragon. The next is Ocean Dragon. That's so much survivability ready and available here for Z for J Team to actually take. But they invade on 0711. Wants to go for the blue buff, will oh, not be able to take it. And now it is just Chi going for the Sonic Wave, just enough to go through onto 0711. Jungler is no longer there as J Team lost it. But they got the trade as Renekton fall. Hyde is gone. Don't want to wait. Overextend. Gargle and Chento. A lot of survivability and it lives. And now it is Aaron. Still. The next target on the head. Alistar follows dude. That sentence connects. Perfect coming in from DY. Just G, the lone wolf for NGX. Run away and go hide as J Team. J Team goes for the chase. Will not be able to go in. And chase him down, but that's enough as the Baron is open for them to take. J Team serves them with a big regret, allowing them to take that first dragon early into the game. Because after they scaled up, now with a second dragon, they look to be unstoppable. Joshi is gonna spot them back, but already a tad too late. He flashes in. Joshi hoping for a miracle steal will not be able to do so. Now Aaron follows through. No damage. Nothing left for them to take. And J Team once more eviscerates NGX. J Team looking to be unstoppable now with Baron secured with two dragon stacks and a kill onto Joshi as well. Setting the goal lead to go higher this time around. We see it growing. 
3,000 right now at 14 and a half minutes. After two minutes, it can go to five, six, maybe even 8,000 as they get turrets and NGX being denied resources. Dominus used by Hyde. Hoping to start up a fight. Having information about Chaos. Enchant? Meter? Big meter, rather. Your enchant has been shown the information onto Hyde. Mega Inferno Bomb as well. Ooh. A lot of damage. But once again, the Lantern being that insurance of safety for J-Team. Yeah. And look at the, the big lead that they suddenly get. Right on point. 6,000. A while ago, it was just 3,000. Big Baron power play by J-Team. Enigma Galaxy is just caught in the middle. Now they have to be a lot more desperate. And Infinity, we talked about this early game composition of Enigma Galaxy. They are having just a big responsibility to set the tempo of this game early into the game. But having that denied now by J-Team means disaster for NGX, right? Yeah, definitely be. I mean, this is the third Drake for J-Team. Uh, they secure it and this is over. Three dragons, winning condition over and over again. We've seen it happen. And now, the only one left to do is one more team fight, NGX. If they can the win up against J Team, oh, they no. will be the miracle maker this time around. However, Just G is in trouble. A 0711 has sights on him. Sonic Wave onto the minions, hoping to escape. Will this be the great escape coming in from the jungler for NGX? Slows by the axe of 0711. But not enough, as that will be enough to take him down. And now the fight occurs here in the bottom jungler. Bottom jungle, rather. NGX is in trouble. Draw and hide mm -hmm. and Demon Kite has to delay the push coming in from JTM. But can they do it? Aaron comes into fray as well. As Draw starts up the fight, it's JTM going in for the push. And him third down in the mid lane. Oh man, that moment by Jussie being in the middle of two towers, the inner and the inhibitor. It was basically checkmate for him. Unfortunate. He tried to escape. He tried to do the, the impossible. But it's simply not enough. And right now, the base is cracked wide open by J Team through the mid lane. And they're just waiting for the Elder Dragon to spawn. It's going to spawn up in the next minute. Enigma Galaxy. You know the thing about fear? It's the worst thing about fear is a fear of a certain thing. And waiting is the most painful thing. See if patience can make it happen for them. As you have stated, pa waiting is painful in this game, especially since the next Drake would be the Elder Drake. The ones who take it could potentially sway this game into their favor. Those three day, those three Drakes are scary to say the least for JTM. And one more fight can end it all. Mm -hmm. Enigma Galaxy, the only thing that they can rely on right now is a big mistake by J Team. If they overstep, if they they fail to get this Elder Dragon and somehow, some way, NGX steals it out, maybe a small sign of life can be seen here for Enigma Galaxy. No vision established here by J Team on this red side jungle of Enigma Galaxy. This is their avenue, this is their way to go. Elder Drake now being started by J-Team. But so far not committing. Does yet. Oh, Just she took a lot of damage, scary. but not enough to bring him down easily. Now draw in the front lines. Going for the knock up onto DY. Says he's in enchant. Immediately cast it out. Now 0711. Ragnarok is there. This is the start. The J-Team wants. Just she goes for the sonic wave. Goes back away immediately. And now in the middle of the fight. It is Hyde looking for that stun. Not gonna happen. As they lost two of their members. A 3v5 is not gonna make you win. 0711 on the front. Don't want to wait to follow suit. Two members down. The ace secured by J-Team. And the only thing they need to do is... Run it down mid. There's a wave already there. And it's just waiting for them to, to push it onto the Nexus. This time, it's a much faster game as well. 19 minutes compared to the 22, almost 23 minutes of game number one. J-Team will equalize the stats. It's a one-to-one -one now on the scoreboard. An amazing return coming in from J-Team. A one-to-one.